Uh, we're going to talk about uh, a new Chevy Silverado. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is it. I got some nice photos here for oh, you. Oh, here we go. Um, and so, so here's some photos. Yeah, I'm sure everybody at home will be able to uh, be viewing this right now if you're watching this in video format. If not, that's what you probably should be doing. Um, and so uh, you can see it looks quite stylish. Uh, it looks very modern and uh, up to date. Uh, it's got, uh, there seems to be a recurring theme of sort of a light bar, either at the back or the front of some of these new cars, and so it's got that at the front, which looks quite nice. So, uh, it's interesting. So, this is added to the uh, ever-increasing lineup of EV trucks that are coming out, particularly in the US. Obviously, the US has a big truck market, uh, and so our competitors, uh, we have spoken you about... You could say it has a big trucking market. You could say that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so uh, some of the competitors are the F-150 Lightning. We've spoken about that previously. Uh, there's the the uh, Tesla Cybertruck, mm. um, obviously uh, inevitably coming out. We haven't yet seen it uh, in production. There's the Arivian R1T, I think it's called, uh, GMC Hummer. So GMC Hummer is actually what this platform is built off. Obviously, GMC is part of the same uh, conglomerate as Chevy, uh, and which is the GM conglomerate. And so uh, it's part of the same uh, chassis design. And so I previously we talked about, um, I think I was talking about the Lightning, the F-150 Lightning, and we compared some of the specs. Now, I've added this to our specs, and I'll just give you a bit of a comparison. To s in your head, you can see where it fits. So, F-150 Lightning, for example, 560 horsepower, okay? Silverado, 754 horsepower. Yeah, wow. Okay, so yeah. significantly more, but the Hummer has 1,000. So, it's not it's not quite up there. They couldn't make it as good as the Hummer. It's No, yeah. the, that's right. It, yeah. it, it wouldn't be in their interest to do so. And But the Cybertruck, for example, is 800. So, it's getting quite close to the Cybertruck. Uh, although where this really does fall down is it's zero to a hundred time. The Cybertruck, uh, cl its claim to fame is less than three seconds. So it's 2.9 seconds. The issue with the, uh, Silverado is it's 4.5 seconds. Yeah. And so obviously that's fast, uh, in traditional truck, trucking worlds. Um, but really in this lineup, it's, it's not super fast. Um, like for example, the, the Hummer's supposed to be less than three, Rivian's less than three, uh, Cybertruck less than three. The F one fifty Platinum, uh, the EV, the Lightning, is uh, it's five point one. So that's actually the slowest of the lot. Mm. And then the last one, which is really crazy, is towing. Okay, so this is actually really wild. So the F one fifty Lightning, four hundred and uh, four thousand five hundred kilograms, so four and a half tons. Uh, Cybertruck, a little over six tons. Uh, Rivian, five tons. But Silverado. Nine tons of towing capacity. Yeah, that's incredible. Yes. And I think that's what people are buying it for. They're not buying it for the acceleration time it's exactly when it's right. that close, you know? Correct. But this particular, <coughs> the market that is going to buy this car, I think you're spot on with that. It, they're just looking for grunt and power, and, and this certainly has it. So they get, they're going to make a specific towing package that will get you up to 9,000 uh, kilograms, which is really, really crazy. And just to give you a gauge on price... Top of the range, which is what we'll be referring to here, is called the RST, and uh, it's going to be just over a hundred thousand dollars in U in US currency. So that's quite expensive. Uh, to put that in perspective, F one fifty Lightning is expected to be, I think it's already on sale in around ninety thousand range. Uh, the uh, the uh, Cybertruck, I think there's been remarks of it being around seventy, which is quite well priced for what it is. And uh, the Hummer, for example, is also in a really similar price point, being in the low hundreds, uh, which is kind of interesting, although it's a very different shaped car, obviously. Uh, just a couple of other interesting points uh, is that it's only offered in a four-door crew cab um, and that they are going to make what's called a trail boss model, which we should get a photo of, uh, which is just very much built towards off-roading and trail, and it looks really awesome. Um, and so some people will obviously be interested in that. So, uh, a couple of interesting things, uh, they all come out dual motor, and so they're all all-wheel drive, which is kind of nice. Previously, if you buy the basic work truck version, it's only rear-wheel drive. So, that gets everybody up to four-wheel drive, which is cool. It has four-wheel steering. You'll remember, maybe, uh, the Hummer, one of its claims to fame, it? Yeah. it has that. One yeah. of its claims to fame is they go the same direction. So it has crab walk mode. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, GM said that within their brand, they're going to keep that just uh, in the Hummer lineup and they're not going to uh, put the crab walking, uh, I guess, functionality into any other vehicles just to keep that special. 
Uh, turning radius is uh, not- quite good because of that, because it has a full steering. They can go in different directions and it turns quite tightly, uh, 13 meters, if that means anything to anyone. And it also has uh, adaptive ride uh, air suspension. And so it can, it can travel 50 uh, millimeters up and down and it can balance itself. For example, so if you've got a rooftop tent on there, that's quite helpful. So you can kind of get a pretty good balance if you're camping or something like that. It's uh, quite good. All independent rear suspension and rear and front suspension, which is nice. None of these leaf springs or anything like that, mm. <laughs> like we've previously seen. Uh, it's got a few interesting things here, which I've noted down. So, uh, in regards to charging and power, it kind of does a lot of the stuff that, uh, the F-150 Lightning talked about. Remember their campaign was all about how long you could, uh, survive in your house off, you know, plugging into That's your, right. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. And so, it, it has all similar claims, like it talks about, uh, it's got 10 outlets and it can charge another EV, which is an interesting claim. So you could, uh, you know, if you've got a fleet of them, uh, that's a good function. You know, if, if you've got them on job sites, you know that you can always get them out of sticky situations. If you're full driving in them, I guess it's you could charge someone else's full drive. Just thinking about how this works in the real world, which is kind of cool. Uh, so this is, uh, so I think it's interesting. It has a, it has Super Cruise. So GM develops their own hands-free driving technology. It's called Super Cruise. And uh, they map it over, it's got 320,000 kilometers of mapped roads within the US. If you're on one of those mapped roads, then it will go into super cruise mode if that's what you want to do. Um, and you can remove your hands from the steering wheel uh, completely. And uh, it will change lanes uh, as long as you don't have a trailer on. Uh, it will trailer with super cruise, but it just won't change lanes uh, just because it blocks some of the sensors. And, uh, and yeah, so that, that's quite cool. Uh, it just tracks your eyes. If you're not looking at the screen, uh, if you're not looking at the, uh, s- the road, then, uh, it'll start beeping and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. But other than that, uh, you can just sort of just chill. You don't have to touch the steering wheel or anything. So that's uh, quite cool. I think, um, uh, what else? Uh, it uses in regards to the technology to do that. It uses, as I said, the combination of the driver attention system, looking at your eyes and LiDAR in order to uh, position the vehicle on the road and map. Uh, it's uh, it, it, it's called geofencing in regards to, uh, it uses uh, the LiDAR system to also tell where you are and whether or not you're allowed to use their super cruise in that area, whether it's been approved and mapped in that area. A few interesting uh, things is it has a greeting. So when you walk towards the car, in the same way all the Teslas, uh, the key is on your app, on your phone nowadays, if that's what you want to do. And so if you walk towards the vehicle, it'll do a cool little like flashy uh, thing with all the lights. Again, incorporating, this is sort of something that I think Tesla really <coughs> initiated in regards to kind of doing fun little things with cars that are more than just um, functionality. Uh, you know, the Tesla does the, whatever it is, the music mode where yeah. all, all the lights go over so and it plays. Yeah, right. Yeah. And it's just like, it doesn't help anybody, but it's interesting. Uh, it's got hands-free start, which is an interesting one with the EVs. When you think about it, you don't have to ever start them. Uh, if you've ever driven a Tesla, which I think you have, uh, it's it's strange. You just put your foot on the accelerator and off you go, um, which is a strange concept. And it's partnered with Google, so it has Hey Google Assistant. Sounds like it should have partnered with uh, Open GPT yeah. or Chat or whatever you call it. <laughs> but uh, and so it has Google Maps, it has uh, Google Play Store, and it has uh, uh, Google Assistant, whatever that's called. What's the Google Assistant called? Alexa? No, that's Amazon. Yeah. I don't know what Google Siri. Is. No, it's not Siri. <laughs> <laughs> Have we got some comments? I'm pretty sure that's it. Uh, an interesting, <laughs> uh, another interesting point I think to make is when you see the outside of one of these vehicles, Chevrolet obviously has a, uh, an E in the middle of the, oh, sorry, Silverado has an E in the middle of the word there, right? And so they take that E and they make it uh, like a bright blue and it focuses on the three uh, horizontal lines. And that's how you can tell that it's an EV version of that vehicle. And they're going to roll that across the, the product range. So every vehicle that uh, has some EV variant will have that little E. So you know it denotes what it is. And so I was listening to a commentator speaking about this. And he asked GM, well, what happens if you bring out a vehicle that doesn't have an E in it? And apparently, allegedly, their response was that, well, that's not an issue at the moment. And so we will deal with that when we get there. So I don't know if that's going to restrict what they can call vehicles. Oh, good, good forward thinking there, though. <laughs> <laughs> a GM, not forward. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so, uh, <laughs> uh, and so it, it's very large, six meters long, two meters high, two point four meters wide, like yeah. really, really, really big. Twenty-four inch wheels. 
That's so big. If it's built on the same, did you say it was built on the same chassis as the Hummer? Like yes. it's it shares the same chassis. Yes. Yeah. So that makes Cause a lot that's, of sense. Because that one's massive. That it's um, really big, Hummer, yeah. like you go to a, a parking lot and you correct. You know, it's taking up the whole the, yeah. the whole space every time. And that's yeah. what that's what that demographic want. I think. Yeah. You want to feel massive and huge and miss it. You know, tall. And so uh, one interesting thing. It's it's small, but I think it's interesting is. Uh, GM or Chevy for a while has done what they call multi-flex uh, mid and uh, rear tailgates. So talking about the mid gate, for example, you know, in a station wagon, if you put the rear seats down, you can go all the way through. You can do that in sedans and stuff as well, I suppose. Um, and it usually has a 60-40 split sort of thing where you can put two down or you can put one down. Uh, it does that uh, in the ute or in the, in the work truck. So you can literally uh, fold the seat down and one additional section and you can put stuff all the way from the tray all the way through to the driver's seat. Yeah, which, that's great. Yeah, obviously gives you so much more room. And then the Multiflex rear gate allows you... It has six different positions. So you can use it, for example, uh, as a seat. Like you can flip it all the way down and flip another piece out and it becomes a seat. Or that can be a step or whatever you want. But you can also put the tailgate uh, horizontal, flip that little piece up, and then it elongates the tailgate even further... So it's like a little stopper yeah. if you've got some bits of timber in there. And so uh, what the total length is over three meters that you can put of timber and mostly probably flat things in there, which I think is very impressive. And again, this demographic is going to be looking for that. Um, so it's pretty interesting. Obviously, unique to these type of vehicles is the front trunk. Uh, people driving these will have never had that before. And people think it's great because a lot of people uh, have never had decent lock-up storage in a truck before. And so they call it the e-trunk, is what uh, Chevy are calling it, e-trunk. Great branding. Yeah, small e, <laughs> Very and smart. capitalized trunk, which is <laughs> interesting. Uh, it's As you'll see in the photos there, interior looks really great. Massive displays, massive 17-inch inf infotainment display, quite a large 11-inch uh, driver cluster display. And, and it even has quite a large... Uh, uh, heads-up display field of view. I think it's 14-inch there as well, which is quite interesting. The only other point as I finish is I was looking on the website, which is probably what we're going to show for a lot of the visual content for this. And uh, one of the interesting things is, I don't know if you remember when I was talking about this Lamborghini that they were bringing out. They did like an AR... A marketing campaign where you could place the Lamborghini that's right. at your house. Yeah, Remember yeah, that? yeah. And you could, yeah, you could have it on your phone. And yeah, you could, yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah. You could walk yeah. around it and augmented it's like reality. Your house. Yeah, augmented yeah. reality. That's right. Yeah. And so uh, Chevy have done that for the Silverado, although when I clicked on it, the website didn't work and uh, it informed me that it, that feature wasn't available uh, in my country. Yes. Okay. Uh, and so, and I get so it. the Silverado is also not available in your country. Correct. <laughs> yeah. I'm not really their like market. And so, yeah. although. Yeah. I've seen a couple get around now, so I don't know whether we're starting to import them or not. Mm. Uh, but you never know. Maybe we'll see an EV one day. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that'd be great. So it looks great. Uh, my summary is that if I was buying a... I mean, I, uh, I'm i a bit of a fan of Tesla, and so I think I'd still buy the, the Cybertruck just because it looks really crazy. And I think they were the first one to really talk about doing it. I know they haven't actually executed on that yet, uh, which is a shame. But So I think it's cool. Uh, I think it'll... I, the the branding and marketing is really interesting. You can see them clearly targeting their current market because it's a it's a pivotal time for them because there's a lot of people who would be driving a Chevy right now, Silverado, who might not think a lot of EV um, technology, and so that you can tell they're using a lot of the 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 phrasing that they're using is like gruff and tough and brutal and like yeah, they're using yeah. all of that phrasing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not efficient and flowy and good for the environment because that's not their market necessarily exactly um yeah. and so it's interesting mm. yeah it's definitely seen as a it's definitely seen as not very manly to have something that's not burning through the petrol especially potentially um, for those buyers yeah <laughs> potentially true yeah it's just not a priority and so um yeah they've they've, they've, they've obviously recognized that so yeah it's interesting i like it that's great yeah do you think it'll compete with the um f-150 and the yeah um and the hummer uh, yeah, so I think the Hummer is in its own category. Yeah. I think the Hummer is so nuts that it, it, it is more like people living in LA who just want some crazy car. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's separate. I think it will compete with the Rivian, the F-150 Lightning, and ne and then now the Silverado. So yeah. I think there's three good options there now. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. There you go.